Hey booktubers, it's the Hufflepuffle here and welcome to Book Talk. Today I'm going to be book talking Winter Kill by Kate A. Borman and I just finished this book and let me tell you, it was amazing. Like holy sh talky mushrooms, I love this book. I'm still kind of a little bit speechless and it might be a bit um, troublesome trying to form my uh, jumbled thoughts into a book talk for you, but I'm I'm gonna attempt it. And if you haven't read it, go read it. Go read it now. Um, so for the spoiler-free section of the video, I'm just gonna say that this book was... It's creepy and thrilling and romantic, but like, not overly sappy romantic if you're like not into that but it's like romantic enough that those of us who like romance will be fulfilled and it's captivating and uh it's one of those books that makes you think about things like and I just, I can't with this book right now, so read it. I'm just going to spread this book like wildfire. Everyone who has not read this book has to read this book. Everyone in the world has to read this book because I just, I feel so strong. Even if you don't like reading, I re highly recommend this book to anyone. Anyone. Like, the first 100 pages were, like, really good. And then, but once you hit that, like, 100 page mark, you're like, you're done for. If, if you planned on doing anything that day, Good luck. Good luck getting your crap done because this book is going to keep you occupied. Okay, so for those of you who haven't read it, goodbye because I'm going to spoil you if you don't leave right now. Okay, so this is the spoilery bit of the video where I basically just pour all my feelings out into the video. I don't know how many of you have made it to this part of the video, but for those of you who have... <sighs> So good. Okay, Emmeline is like the greatest character because like she's a female heroine and she's like really awesome, like stands up for what's right, but she's like crippled and she's not one of those heroes that's like, I'm incredible and everything I do is awesome and I could never do wrong and I'm invincible. She's such a good character and she's so interesting and I just reading it, I pictured everything she did so clearly and everything she could think I could, I could process. Her thought processes were totally realistic. Like, I could follow her thought processes and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense that you would do that. And not be like, what the hell are you doing? That makes no sense. I'm always, when reading, like, a, especially first person point of view, I find if I'm reading a book and the hero is like, oh yeah, every time they have a thought process, I'm like, what are, no, don't do it, stupid. But all the decisions she made were kind of reasonable, kind of. I mean, there were a few times that I was like, what are you doing? But that's simply because I wouldn't do that if, like, it was me. But it made sense for her to do it, so I was, I, I could accept it. Like, the first time she ran into the woods, I was like, <sighs> it, it kept me so interested. I was like, nothing better happened to her. Like, I fell in love with this character, and I was like, nothing can happen to her. But, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, I just, I just need to sit down for a moment and relax and try not to die of a feels explosion because this book made me feel all the feels like the writing was so immersive and so appropriate for the character like all of the all just oh uh, it was her voice I like the character's voice was so realistic it wasn't like completely astounding big words for this character that doesn't even know how to read like uh 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 <laughs> and like uh and the whole part i just i wanted to know the history of the sentiment i wanted to know i was like what is this big deal with her grandmother what happened exactly and then when we finally find out like what she did and that she wasn't actually stained and that it was the settlement leader that killed her indirectly kind of and she wasn't actually wayward well she kind of was but not in that way and like <clears throat> and then how he killed the lost people and i was like don't kill the lost people but it was it's a event of the past and it's already happened but like okay can we take a moment to talk about kane for a second like ho 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 damn like 
<laughs> I'd like I'd like a cane in real life, thank you very much. I'd take him any day over the stupid idiot boys at my school, but you know, I'm just gonna... No. He's fictional, Lindsay. You always do this. You always do this. You always do this. Oh, I'd like to date that boy. Oh, too bad. He doesn't exist. Why does this always happen to me? And then when she was like, mm, when she like doubted him and he, she was like, oh, he's gonna turn me into the castle. I was like, no, he would never do that. He loves you. But she was like, oh, he loves me. I can't believe I would actually believe that he loves me. I'm like, but he does love you, Emmeline, can't you see? When she finally at the end is like, oh yes, oh, I do love you and you do love me and I'm so sorry I didn't believe you. And he's like, I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. And I was like, I cried. I was emotionally affected by that part in the story. I was emotionally affected by this entire book. Oh, oh. this is like my new OTP. Like Emmeline and Kane is like my new OTP. I ship that. They need a ship name. I don't want the responsibility of coming up with a ship name, but Kate, if you're watching this, can you can you give me the details on the ship name for Emmeline and Kane? Because I would really appreciate that because it is my new ode. I love it so much. Like Kane and Emmeline, I just can't and I can't wait to see more of their relationship in the next books. And fall can't come soon enough, but I do live in the same place as the author, so uh hint hint. Kate, if you're watching, Ark, possibly, that'd be nice, that'd be great. I was conversing with an author, like a real published author, a really amazing published author at that, uh-huh, yeah, and I was kind of fangirling the entire time, and I'm still kind of in a bit of a state of shock that I'm kind of buddy-buddy with an author, well, not exactly, but you know, enough. She, we're on a first name basis, so that's pretty cool. She calls me Lindsay, first name basis, that's right. That is right, she knows my name. Mm-hmm. She follows me on Instagram, like, this is, and Twitter, like, this is, this is the, this is the level that I want. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was it was always one of my goals this year. It was like, I want to make an author friend in 2015. Well, I've done that, and it's only February. Look at me go. I'm on a roll with these resolutions. Yeah, and then maybe she'll inspire me to complete my other resolution, which is to write a first draft of a novel, which I've attempted many times and never completed. And this video is getting completely off topic, and that's not at all. Uh, Brother Stockholm, I haven't talked about him at all. I don't know if I'm saying that name right, but you know, whatever. I always mispronounce names, so I'll just, I'll roll with it. Brother Stockholm, like, whoo, like, oh, he made me angry, like, when she was like, oh, maybe I should accept him. The whole time I was like, don't you dare accept him. You go to your father right now, and you tell him there is no way I'm ever marrying that twat, okay? And, but then she didn't, and then she accepted him, but then, Oh, that whole part where he was like, I'm in love with you and we're gonna change fate at our love and she he she kept he kept referring it to their love as if she loved him back and he she was like, mm-hmm. Huh. And then I was like, just tell him that you don't love him and be nice about it. I'm sure he'll understand. Nope. Didn't understand at all. He kind of went insane when she said that she didn't love him back and threw her in the freezing cold river. I was so mad. I was like, I had a moment. I slapped the book. I did. I was like, what? What? And then I just, I had to put the book down for a moment. I had to take a little walk because I was, I was a bit shocked. I was like, you, you, because for one minute he's like, I'm in love with you and we're going to change the fate of the settlement and we're going to prove everyone wrong. The next minute he throws her in the lake. River, not lake, river, because she doesn't love him back. I mean, if you really loved her, you wouldn't do that, would you? So if you were really in love with her, just because she doesn't love you back does not mean that you need to kill her. Like, and I mean, even though I know why he did it in a way, I just still, I was like, dude, that's not how you properly deal with your girlfriend issue. But then when Kane was there and he and Matisse saved her, I was like, ah, my little shipper heart is sick. 
And I just couldn't. I couldn't. I was like, yes, Ken. And then when they were in the cave and they were like cuddling, I was like, my heart is hurting with emotions. And then when she was all like, oh, when she was lying to him now, I was like, oh, this better not go wrong for you because I will slap you aside the face, Emmeline, if this goes wrong. And Ken gets mad at you and then you have to deal with relationship issues. But it didn't go wrong. It went exactly right. And they come into the settlement and everyone's like, oh, first people's, uh, we have hope at last. And then when brother when they go into the thing and I was okay I was expecting the book to end when she like walks in and like pulls up her hood and then it's like she pulls up her hood and a book and I was really hoping it didn't end like that because I remember reading Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare and like Cecily walks in and she's like ha huh! and everyone's like oh my god sheer talky mushroom storm and then and then it I just I was so scared that that's how the book was gonna end and I was like it better not end like that but then it didn't but then whoo, shiitake mushrooms went down like oh I was like what is happening like everyone was like rallying and then brother Jameson was like mm. and then brother Stockholm like takes out the gun and I thought he was gonna shoot her but then I was like no no he's gonna shoot himself and then the whole moment Evelyn's like oh my god he's gonna shoot me but then he shot himself and everyone was like what? And then Brother Jameson started, sh like, shooting, and it, when he killed her father, I was so sad. I was like, I knew it was going to happen. I, I totally knew it was going to happen, but I was still like... <sighs> it's, that's one of the best things. When you, like, totally predict something and you know it's going to happen, like, it's not like you've been spoiled or anything, but you just know it's going to happen. But, like, it still hurts. That That's a good thing that authors are able to do that, like, that, that I... I admire the power to do that to me. It hurts me, but I mean, it, it's a it's a strong power. So good for you authors. But I was like, oh, her father. And then I thought that Cain was gonna get shot when like he threw the knife. I thought he was gonna die. And then at the, when she was talking about surprise, it's like how it was like like this similar to loss. I was like, oh god, she better not have lost Cain too. But then I had to like like glance ahead to make sure I saw his like name and make sure he was alive and I was like, okay he's alive and then I could read on in peace like I didn't like spoil myself or anything I just like glanced at the next page to make sure that he was alive and he was so I was like oh good oh good and I just jumped ahead a couple paragraphs I was like okay he's alive and then I went back and read it and I was like okay it's all good but I was like her father's dead and that's really sad but then they were all like talking about how they might bind and I was like you better bind because you're my OTB and, uh, it's just, it was a good ending because I felt like I wasn't going to be dying until the fall, with a cliffhanger at least, but like, still I want the next book now. Either way, I loved this book so, so, so much, and I just can't. And 5 out of 5 stars for Winter Kill by K.D. Borman, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And that's the end of the video, so uh, I will see you guys next time. Hufflepuffle, out.